Hey, what's up guys, Boba Rail here, and today I'm going to be talking about what I think would be one of the most game-changing features that could be added to Vigor. I'm going to explain my thought process step by step in how I think it could be implemented, the effects it would have on the gameplay, and what changes or obstacles could stand in the way of its implementation. So that's enough for an introduction, this is the proposal for dynamic loot in Vigor. So when I say dynamic loot, what am I actually talking about? Well, it's a term that gets thrown around a lot in survival shooter style games, and it kind of varies in definition from case to case. In the instance of Vigor, my personal view for what dynamic loot means is a series of creatively or contextually placed spawns for loot items. At the moment, loot is generally scattered around maps in three ways. Number one is loot POIs, so obviously the safe, lock container, time safe, and the airdrop. Number two is what I would call container spawns, so these are your normal shelves, toolboxes, lockboxes, and if you're really lucky, the red crate. Generally, it's just any container that has a chance to spawn things inside of it and brings up the looting UI upon interaction. The third and final loot distribution method is what I think needs somewhat of an addition slash overhaul, this being loosely rendered loot. I'm talking about those little bottles of chemicals or bags of fertilizer you'll just see lying around. All of these freestanding models that instantly go into your inventory are what I find to be the most interesting. But what do I see wrong with them that makes me feel the need to make this video? Well, in terms of value, these are hands down the least valuable, which isn't necessarily a problem in itself because they are the most common type of loot. You shouldn't be getting crazy amounts of materials from them because they are literally everywhere. But I also think that this third distribution method has the most potential for dev creativity and improvement. See, the most sought after loot in the game is guns and consumables. And throughout the game's lifecycle, both the POI and container methods have received updates to increase their overall value. For POIs, they added the lock container and the time safe, which both spawn lots of guns, ammo, and consumables. And for the other normal containers, we got the lock boxes and the red crates. The lockboxes are no joke, and they sometimes can give you guns of blue or above rarity, on top of some good parts and materials. And of course the red crate gives you an airdrop, so it's obviously added to this category's value. But the loose loot category has received no such updates, and in fact since I've started playing the game, there's been an overall reduction in its value through the removal of ammo boxes. If you don't know what those were, there used to be these little army ammo boxes that would spawn around and give you various ammo types. If you're interested in them specifically, we actually made a video a while back covering those more in depth, so if anybody wants to see that, it will be linked in the description below. Regardless, there's currently no way to get weapons or consumables as loose loot spawns, and adding individual weapons and consumable spawns around the maps is what I think would really take Vigor's looting system to the next level. Now to clarify, I'm not just talking about having guns spawn on the floors like they do in games like DayZ or PUBG. If they end up adding them, I think they should have set spawn locations across each map that would be specifically picked to be where the loot would make the most sense. And this is what I was talking about at the beginning of the video when I said creatively or contextually place spawns. Let me try to explain this a little better with some visuals. So basically, right now we already have some loot spawns in the game that I would consider to be contextual. Fuel tends to only spawn near cars, glass in houses, and toolboxes and cabinets in more industrial areas. You know, you can kind of assume what loot you'll get from somewhere based on the setting. So when adding weapons and consumable spawns to a map, they should change depending on their surroundings. And combining that with a bit of the sneaky slash hidden aspects that we've seen in the buried treasure would take this concept even further. In this example, this is more of a farmhouse, so maybe somewhere inside there could be spawn locations for either a hunting type rifle or a shotgun. Here we have an IZH hidden under the bed, and some antibiotics on the bathroom sink. Now, I also should say these would need to be pretty heavily restricted in their spawn rates for balancing purposes. You obviously shouldn't get two primary weapons out of each building, but you could balance that by making it synced with rarity and loot boosting. So maybe in a regular round, no boost lobby, only the shotgun spawns. But on 200% boosted, both the shotgun and the antibiotic spawn. Or maybe only the shotgun spawns, but instead of an IZH, it's a sawed-off. A lot of that really comes down to specifics, but you get the point. Just having some of these would make people really look closer at their surroundings and explore all of the environments in Vigor. I think this would do wonders for the replayability, as well as help new players stuck in the early game get access to weapons at their own pace, so they don't always have to push POIs or the airdrop to progress the game. 
And a more simple and straightforward progression system generally would mean a higher player retention. Oh, and by the way, this wouldn't need to be limited to just rural areas. Let's take an example from the city. Here we could have a VZ-58 sitting in a tent. And then once again, let's say we boost the loot and suddenly the gun in this tent is an AKM or even as high as a blue or a purple AR or LMG. Really, the sky's the limit with what could be done here, and they could even play around with using weapon skins to camouflage guns. And if they really wanted to go crazy with it, they could even use it to help tell a story. For example, leaning a M2 carbine against this truck or another allied faction gun like an M16 or a G3 could tell us that these were rebels standing up against Russian invaders. And that would be an example of how map design and contextual loot spawns can go hand in hand. I love everything about this idea, and I feel like the lack of this is something really holding Vigor back a lot from reaching its full potential. But I should also mention that there would likely be some minor drawbacks slash complications to this. The biggest one is its developmental organization. Handpicking all of these spawns would absolutely take time, and it would be completely unfair to expect in one update we suddenly get all of this loot added, especially considering how small the Vigor dev team is. So what solution could be offered to that? Well, ticketed baby steps. Say in 10.0 or even further down the line like 10.1 to 11.0, we just start seeing disinfectants or just the rural areas or just one map gets some and it, 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 to be honest, it doesn't really matter. Just take it in chunks. A slow addition over multiple updates, just how they did the additional spawns for the buried cache would be just fine. And it would give time for the community to discover it and give feedback on it. This would also allow individual balances to be made as they're added, preventing them from being memorized or abused. And either way, eventually there would be enough spawns that memorizing or farming wouldn't be that much of an issue. Now, all of that's assuming that any devs actually see this video or care about it, but either way, I really want to formulate and give my insight on how this could be done. Another much smaller problem I see that could come from this would be match pacing. If people can loot 10 houses in a boosted lobby and get the same amount of loot as there is in a safe, then it might make POIs less competitive and overall make less gunfights happen. But to be honest, I think that any redirection would result in more action in unexpected areas or at the airdrop, which would allow each player to experience combat in locations they never would have fought over before. So yeah, overall I'd say that dynamic loot or the addition of loose weapons and consumable spawns is something that should absolutely be considered because it will help the player retention and replayability, as well as making gunfights less predictable. And really, I think whether you think predictability in combat is a good or a bad thing will change depending on each person's individual playstyle. Either way, thank you guys for listening to my crazy Photoshop-backed rants, and devs, if you're listening, please take what I'm talking about into consideration. Anyways, this has been Bobo Rail on the Christopher Beast channel, and I'll catch you all in the next one.